diabetic skin conditions and diabetic symptoms. It's said that almost 40% of people in the developed world are said to be pre-diabetic or worse, and most people don't even know about it. So I'm gonna be going over the skin conditions, focusing on what I see and how to treat it, and all the tips and tricks, and all the things you need to be doing starting now. As we go through this list, check out our guide below. We go through all this stuff. It makes sense for diabetes. Acanthosis nigricans. This is a condition that causes dark, thickened, and often velvety patches of skin. These are commonly found around the neck, the armpits, the groin, and other body folds. It is often associated with insulin resistance and obesity. Skin tags as well can lead to this condition. Do you have skin tags on your neck? In your folds, skin tags are shown to be associated with insulin resistance as well and high blood sugar rates. I have a lot of patients on these videos, so I have a video how to remove your skin tags, but essentially the big secret is as you get your blood sugar under control, as you get healthier, for most people, skin tags disappear. Now, in some people, there's other causes, but in most people, this will gradually help your skin tags disappear. Granuloma alaire. This is a condition that leads to raised, reddish, or flesh-colored bumps arranged in circular or ring-like patterns on the skin. It can occur on the hands, the feet, or other areas. Allergic reactions and dermatitis or eczema. So this is a tricky one. But contact dermatitis is basically irritation to more substances. What happens is eczema is very common. It just means your skin gets irritated by stuff. It could get irritated by dry conditions, by itching. Essentially, when you have dry skin, like athlete's foot, or I mentioned some of the fungal infections on your skin, which love sugar, your skin's gonna be more irritated. Great hygiene, good showers, good moisturizing will help that dry skin. You don't necessarily need to jump to drugs, but if you're worried, check with your doctor. But a lot of times, moisturizing and cleaning that skin can help. Diabetic dermopathy, also known as shin spots. Diabetic dermopathy manifests as light brown scaly patches on the skin. These are typically found on the shins. These patches are usually harmless and can take a long time to heal if injured. Again, as your blood sugar gets better, diabetic dermopathy starts to disappear. Necrobiosis lipotica diabeticorum. That's a mouthful. Necrobiosis lipotica diabeticorum. This rare condition leads to raised reddish brown patches with a yellowish border, often appearing on the lower legs. It can be itchy and sometimes painful. You want to correct all the underlying functions. If you're in the Michigan area, I work out of the Diabetes Institute. I provide the foot care, but we have dedicated diabetes only endocrinologists. If you're struggling in Michigan, come see us, hit us up in the comments below. Diabetic blisters, bullus diabeticorum. These are uncommon and large blisters that can be developed on the hands, the fingers, the feet, or on the toes. They are typically painless and heal independently, but keeping them clean is essential to prevent infections. Fungal infections. People with diabetes are much more likely and susceptible for fungal infections, such as yeast infections, ringworms, around other parts of their body. So in your groin, in your armpits, on your trunk, you can get these. Toenail fungus. Toenail fungus is something I see all the time. Basically, with diabetes, you have more blood sugar and less blood flow to your toenails. You develop thicker skin. Don't worry, there's a lot that can be done about this, but essentially get in greater shape, getting your diabetes down, and using the home remedies I go over in those guides can be really helpful. Check out that guide below, our top home remedies to get your toenail fungus taken care of quick. That's something I see a ton. Again, if you're in the Michigan area, come see me. Otherwise, check out the guide too. Athlete's foot. Athlete's foot, do you have dry scaly skin around the bottom of your foot, flakes, powder in your socks? So when you take off your socks, is there material in there? That's athlete's foot. It can be itchy, it can be dry, it can be scaly. Check out my guide on athlete's foot. You can take care of it. It's very predictably taken care of. Check out my home remedies below. Bacterial infections. This is known as cellulitis, but elevated blood sugar levels can weaken the immune system. So your immune system does not work as well. If you get a cut, if you get a blister, a pimple, an ingrown hair, this could lead to cellulitis. This is a hospital emergency. If you think you have cellulitis, 
give your doctor a call immediately. This is something that I give my patients my pager so they can speed dial me anytime we wanna get an antibiotic going. You don't wanna wait and take any chances. And this leads to an abscess as well. If you actually have a boil or a large pimple that feels like there's fluid in there, this happens a lot in the feet, the toenails, between the toes. This is something that needs to be popped and drained fairly quickly. This is high risk. This is something you definitely want to take care of. This is something I see a lot of in the hospital. Diabetic foot ulcers. Prolonged high blood pressure and high sugar levels can lead to poor circulation, nerve damage. So initially you have poor blood flow, you have nerve damage, poor sensation, you have corns, calluses, or an ingrown toenail. This could lead to a wound. The wound gets bigger, if it doesn't heal, that's considered an ulcer. This can lead to a serious complication. This is why people lose their toes or their foot or worse. One thing that I always tell people with all these foot problems, especially if you're developing neuropathy, diabetes, poor sensation, great shoes. So I work with a great shoe company called Ortho Feet. These are essentially diabetic shoes where you don't have stitching on the inside. You have a soft, supportive insole. It's gonna help you walk easier. It's gonna cushion the ball of your foot. It's gonna cushion your heel. Xerosis or dry skin. Diabetes can lead to excessively dry skin. This can lead to itching, cracking. Do you have cracks or sores on your heels? These are also called heel fissures. So diabetes, because the blood vessels don't penetrate to the edges as well, this causes dry skin and is very common in individuals with poorly controlled blood sugars. There's a lot that can be done about that. Check out my guide on dry skin calluses below. Corns and calluses. This is something that I see very frequently, but essentially a corn is a plugged sweat gland. So if a callus forms over a plugged sweat gland, you can have almost this spike. It looks like a wart, feels like a wart. If you have neuropathy and poor sensation, you might not be able to feel it. This is where podiatrists such as myself can trim it down, get that pressure off. But again, a great shoe like the OrthoFeet shoes or a good supportive home slipper, which again, OrthoFeet makes down below. This can make a big, big difference. Digital sclerosis. Digital sclerosis is characterized by thickening of the skin on the fingers, on the toes, it can make it difficult to bend the joints and it could be associated with diabetes. I mentioned a lot of these are things that happen in the foot. The majority of these issues that I mentioned, you see most commonly on the foot. That's where diabetic foot care is critical for preventing complications like foot ulcers, infections. It could lead to serious issues like gangrene, amputation, and this is so common. I have done these procedures way too much. Examine your feet regularly. Use a mirror if you can't bend over, but check for cuts, blisters, sores, redness, swelling, or changes in your skin color. You want proper foot hygiene. If you have thick, dry skin, you want to use a foot soak. So essentially you can get some Epsom salts and some warm water and soak your feet for about five, 10, 15 minutes. While you're watching some TV, some Netflix, soak your feet, all that dry skin will come off. It'll soften your nails. You'll be able to take care of them easier. That dry skin will come off. And when you're done, moisturize. You can use some thick creams on the bottom of your feet to apply to prevent cracked skin, thick skin, especially in the winter. You just don't wanna put it in between your toes. You can also buy some over-the-counter antifungal agents and creams. I put some of my favorites down below. They can work well. You can trim your nails carefully. Trim your toenails straight across. Avoid kind of digging into the corners. Don't cut them. And you wanna wear proper footwear. As a diabetic, if you come see your podiatrist, a lot of people qualify for diabetic shoes. But if not, if you have issues getting those, check out a good brand like OrthoFeet. They prevent the stitching on the inside. There's no rough edges. They have a good supportive cushioned insole. They have good support that doesn't rub, doesn't damage your feet. They got the slippers, they got the sandals, they got the shoes. Check out my favorites below, including discount codes. And inspect your shoes. Make sure there's nothing uneven. So if you buy the OrthoFeet shoes, you're good. A lot of shoes have stitching on the inside, have uneven edges. I've seen so many patients have a bunched up insole, some type of foreign object in there. You wanna take care of that. And the most common complications of diabetes are cardiovascular disease, heart disease, stroke, hypertension. You wanna check all that out. Peripheral neuropathy, so that's nerve damage. Diabetic neuropathy is the number one cause of nerve damage. So you get numbness, tingling, pain,
pain in your extremities and organs, nephropathy. So that's high blood sugar that can damage kidneys over time, eventually leading to kidney failure. This is terrible. Retinopathy. This is eye damage, poor vision, not being able to see, and peripheral artery disease. This is something that I see very commonly, cold feet, cold toes, poor blood flow. So make sure you come get evaluated. Studies do show that a lot of this is reversible. We can address and attack these things. And the number one things in order that I like to address are number one, getting your muscle strength up. Your muscles can digest that sugar, keep you lean, keep you active, burn up that sugar. And that's what keeps you fit, produces all the right hormones. Number two is you want to focus on your cardio, focusing on your cardio. You breathe better, your blood vessels are better, your heart's better. It lets you move more. It lets you burn more calories. Number three, you want to get better sleep. It's said that about 40% of Americans, so about 35 specifically, do not get the required seven hours or more of sleep per day. There was a great study that basically said if we sleep less than six hours per day, our blood sugar is about 10 points higher per day on average than if we sleep our full eight hours. So that can make a big, big difference in keeping us in great shape. And then you want to focus on diet. Diet is not at the top. Number one is muscle strength, keeping fit, keeping mobile, being able to exercise because the stronger muscle, the more sugar we can absorb, the better our hormones, the better our metabolism. Number two, you want your heart, your blood vessels. Three, you want to sleep well. That helps you make better decisions, helps you have lower blood sugar, helps you be less hungry. And then number four, our diet. And I should mention on this guide, I also go over supplements as well. So I have a video titled the top 10 supplements for your diabetes. But again, supplements is last on the list. And then you want to manage your blood sugars. As I said, in order, muscle strength, cardio, sleep, great diet, supplements, and seeing your diabetic endocrinologist. You want to do all of those things. Sometimes that involves medication, diet, regular exercise, and you want regular checkups. Have a primary care doctor or a diabetic endocrinologist and have a podiatrist with you for regular foot exams. Check for neuropathy, check for poor circulation. You also want to avoid smoking. Smoking obviously worsens circulation. I'm not going to spend too much time on that. Hit me up if I missed anything. Tell me if I got anything wrong. I love hearing your opinions. Tell me if that worked.